Hey users, this is Trace here with Number Engine and the Optimization Solver add-on for Google Sheets. Today I'm making this video to serve as a tutorial for all of our users that explains everything that they need to know to use the Optimization Solver add-on and all of its basic features. So we're going to do that here today in quick start guide fashion, starting off with a tour of the user interface and briefly explain the layout and all of its features. Then after that, uh, we're going to pivot and I'm going to demonstrate putting those concepts in action by solving two example problems. Um, and so with that introduction out of the way, let's, let's, let's get right into it. So this tutorial starts off and is going to assume that you've already installed the optimization solver add-on from the workspace marketplace. So after you've done that, you should be able to look here at the top ribbon of any of your Excel sheets. And under the extensions tab here, you'll be able to click on that and expand that menu down. And depending on where other add-ons you've installed and uh, where that position is, you should be able to find, or you'll be able to find the optimization solver menu uh, here below the extensions tab, like I mentioned. And highlighting over that reveals a couple of uh, other options in a sub menu here. But and these are all pretty self-explanatory. But what we care about here showing is what the uh, launch add-on feature. So all you got to do to launch the add-on and open up the user interface is just simply that. All you got to do is just highlight, is just keep your cursor over the highlighted portion, just click that. And with that, you'll be able to launch the add-on. And so from there, you'll see that uh, the user interface is loaded up for us. Um, and I'm just going to review this like I mentioned really quick, and we're just going to start from the top. Uh, and work our way down through this. So at the very top here, you'll notice that the default opening page here, there, there's a main menu tab uh, that, that we start out on here. <clears throat> and what this tab, the purpose of this tab basically is where all the magic happens, you know, essentially where uh, the main controls and functionality of the add-on reside. And so this is gonna be where you'll be able to make, input all your specifications, to your models and actually complete a solve, which is what you downloaded this add-on to do. Uh, and then this other tab here, this is just the more tab. And basically this is just a catch on tab to provide some additional resources and uh, things for our users, uh, depending on what their, their, their need might be when it, that comes up whenever they're using this add-on. So for instance here, at the very top, we've got this getting started section. And under there, we've got two links like one of which being this tutorial exactly we're going to right here in this link but uh the other link that i've got here is open source example models and so th this is a web page this will link to a web page on our website and on that website are hosted a bunch of open source models and excel spreadsheets that i have developed and if you want to use any of those just say as a convenient starting point or you want to see how other models are built or just have some fun additional examples to play with those will provide you those for you uh, and kind of borrowing more on the user slash official management experience side of the add-on here, we've got this quick link section right here as well. Uh, and in here, we've got different stuff like if you're on the full version, you can manage your existing subscription or purchase a new subscription with these with the, with these links either monthly or yearly. And additionally, there's some other stuff like just our basic website link, legal documents, and then this contact us page if you need to get a hold of us for any reason. We've got some forms that you could fill out and conveniently get, get in touch with us. But back to the main menu tab here, let's just briefly, like I mentioned, work our way top down uh, and, and show you what's really going on and what all the features of this, uh, of this user interface uh, have for you. So you'll see here that when you're on the free trial version, it's gonna tell you how much time you have left remaining in free trial and below that there's three bolded header sections which really just denote and kind of delineate the three main input sections that you'll need to specify in order to solve your models and use this tool so first section here is objective function cell and also I should mention at this time if you're ever curious uh, or have any additional questions and wonder like what a specific section is for or what some setting or something does I've positioned a lot of these tool tips with these question mark icons around here. And so you can hover over those and it just reveals a little batch of text and it can just show you like more information about the 
the section in question or feature in question that you're uh, that that you're looking at. So you can read through these, and it's a convenient source of information to tell you to tell you uh, what something does or how to input something or whatever else. But uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm not going to read all through those, and I'm just going to explain a lot of these here. So yeah, first section here is our objective function, and our objective function simply just represents the goal that we're trying to accomplish with our optimization here. So within this section, we've got the text field input for cell reference. And right beside of that, we've essentially got whether we want to maximize or minimize the objective function. <clears throat> and so a lot of times, this objective function will manifest as, say, like profit, for instance. Like in most cases, a business wants to optimize their profit. But this could be a lot of other things. And, 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 and you'll see that if you look through the example model. But for the simplest case, we'll just stick to and assume that in most cases this is this is profit. And so in order to actually use this text field, hey, all you got to do is just say that you're in your model, your objective function is stored in cell, say, B2. All you got to do, just type in the cell, the cell reference name, B2. And that's it. And then you can select whether you want to maximize or minimize. And you'll notice when I was typing in there, when I just had B, that... Um, this text field border highlights is red to tell you and kind of show you and help out that, hey, you've got an input that doesn't really make sense here. So what it's expecting are inputs that match the syntax of cell references. And when you have something kind of crazy in there like that, like, you know, that, that doesn't really make sense. So that's going to flag and give you a little bit of hint there. So moving on here next to the decision variable section. This is just a place where you can input all the cell references for the decision variables in your model. And those decision variables, as explained here, it's just going to be the variables or cell references of the options or decisions that you have that you want the model to solve for. That is basically going to iterate, and then the solution will change those values to give you the optimum solution. And within this section right here, we have three things that we can interact with. The first one is this checkbox which is just the integer control checkbox. And what this does is when you want to specify that a specific cell reference needs to be an integer, all you got to do is just click that, check that, say, yes, I want this to be a uh, solved as an integer, and then it will. But by default, this is clicked off. So just if you want that, you can do so. And uh, I should also mention at this time that th this option is only available in the linear solution method which we'll get down here later again. But if you use the nonlinear solution method, you won't have the option to solve with integer solutions at this time. So getting back up to linear here, uh, with this text field, this looks a lot like this up here that we just talked about. That's because it's also very similar. Here you can input your decision variable cell references. And so what this is going to look like is either just going to be a single cell reference, like let's say like A3 again, or you can even do ranges. You can say A3 to say like a nine or you can do the square or rectangular references you can even go to like c8 so or c9 sorry you there, there's many options that you have here at your disposal to uh, in, in styles and syntaxes and ways that you can input your cell references for convenience and additionally say if you have different ranges you want to add more you just just click this add variables button all you got to do it just just like you'd expect it just adds another section right there and you can add as many uh, as you want here as up to 50 decision variables as long as you don't have more than 50 decision variables trying to solve in your model at this time then you can add as many as you want and then uh just like like you would expect you can delete these added ones with this uh delete button right off to the side our final section here is the constraint section and this is where you're really just going to be building the expressions that represent constraints in your model so that you don't have infinite bounds. You know, you actually tell the model to solve within some certain, uh, you know, region or, or some way that constrains it so it doesn't try to go to infinity. And, and this is set up and really specified exactly like you would express any normal mathematical inequality or some sort of expression like this. So uh, you have your operator here in the middle, which is just an option of less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or equal to. And on the LHS, which stands for left-hand side and then right-hand side, those just really are going to represent either a cell reference or a range reference, like we showed up there, or a number. So you could do things like, um, you could say like A1, you know, or A, sorry, A2 has to be less than or equal to 9, or you could even do like C3 to C8, you know, this has to also be less than like, nine or greater than equal just just kind of whatever you want additionally you can also do ranges of the same length so i could also do like say 
d3 to d8 here like this and this would also work as long as they're the same amount of cells within the range and it, you know, it makes sense so <clears throat> but th that's uh the constraints section here oh and i actually i glossed over one small important detail this checkbox here uh, this is a checkbox to essentially just automatically add another constraint in here that just by default that basically just says, hey, all of the decision variables that you specify up here, they are going to be subject to a constraint that says that they have to be positive. They have to be greater than zero. And that's a common requirement in a lot of cases where, you know, it might not make sense to have a negative decision variable. And oftentimes if you don't, it's easy to forget that. And sometimes it won't solve if you don't have that. So that's checked on by default, but if you're trying to solve a model where that doesn't make sense, you can just easily click it off. But in most cases, we'll we'll probably leave that on. Uh, and then finally here, you just kick off a solve with the solve button right there, the big blue button. Uh, and then off to the right, we have, like we briefly showed earlier, you have that solution method toggle. So you can switch your method from either the linear method or the nonlinear method. And when you do switch over to the nonlinear method, you'll see that you have a couple of additional parameters that are used in the nonlinear solution method. And again, for brevity, I'll save going over what these mean because the tooltips do a pretty good job of explaining it. But uh, yes, you do have four options of different parameters to play around with in the nonlinear solution method. But the linear sol solution method does not does not have those parameters. So <clears throat> now we're going to pivot, like we mentioned, and we're going to solve just demonstrate ourselves solving a really simple example problem here. And if you've ever studied constrained optimization or linear, nonlinear programming at all before, you may be familiar with this problem. But the one we're going to just take a look at really quick first here is it's a linear problem. It's called the tables and chairs sort of factory problem. And what I've tried to depict and represent here with this diagram is uh, suppose that the problem premise is that we are a factory and we have a certain amount of resources here. We have 400 pieces of wood and some amount of man hours at our disposal. And so our two options, which actually end up being our two decision variables, is we can choose whether there are the amount of tables and or chairs or combination of both things that we want to make. Uh, and in doing so, that decision results in a certain number of profit, but also results in using up a specified amount of resources. So the question and really the motivation becomes, well, what's the optimum choice? Like what's the optimum number of tables and chairs that we can make that optimizes our profit margins, basically, that or that optimizes the most amount of money we can possibly make. And I have actually built this model to represent that problem exactly. So we'll just go through and solve it exactly uh, like using how I just went through the UI earlier. So. Uh, starting with our objective function cell reference again here, we've got our profit function built and represented here in this cell C13. So all we got to do, just like mentioned, just type in C13 right there, and we want to set that to maximize our profit. Over on the decision variables, I've got this here as uh, the chairs, the number of chairs and tables built. And those cells reside in C16 to C17. So you could input that range just like this. But additionally, it's worth mentioning that, like, you, you know, you could enter each of these ind independently. So you can go C16 and C17 on their own. But for, you know, simplicity's sake, I'm just going to keep it all in one row here. And then, yes, we actually are going to specify that we do want these to be integers. The, the, we want the solution to solve these integers, which, integers, which is just whole numbers. Um, because it wouldn't make sense to sell half of a chair or, like, a quarter of a table. So... We're going to constrain that to be integers. Um, and then finally here in the constraint section, um, we're just going to input that. So we, we have this model, this section modeled here in C14 and C15 to specify the amount of wood and hours that are used based on how many tables and chairs we have built here. So I'll reset those back to zero just to show the solve. But uh, we just want to make sure here, we want to constrain and say, hey, the amount of wood and hours that are used must not exceed the total amount of wood that we have in pieces in the labor hours that are that that are available to us. Um, and so with that, those two constraints reside in C9 to C10. So we'll just say that that has to be less than or equal to C9 to C10. And with this all specified in the UI, we are ready to solve. And so 
Here on our linear solution, we'll just go ahead and click the solve button. And you'll watch as the add-on loads and does its calculations. And boom, we got our notification screen saying that we found our solution. And that it's 2,270. Um, and that's going to be applied to the spreadsheet here. So we saw that we had zero. So it's it solved the model, and then it's going to give you the results. So bam, there it is. There's your results, and then we return back to zero, where you can do it all again if you want. So that's the simple premise of the tables and chairs model. So now wrapping up here with this video, we'll just do one more really quick with the blending model here. So I'll just clear these out real quick. But while I'm doing that, I'll explain that the premise of this model is very simple as well. It basically just says that, uh, say, it's, it's like same thing, say it's a factory, some kind of company. We start with an inventory of two components and a certain amount of those components. So in this case, we have 35 of component one and 100 of component two for a total sum of like 135 of uh, the combination of the two. Uh, and in this case, we, what we could, our decisions are represented by the fact that we can sell the components on their own by themselves for a certain price. So component one can sell for $126 per unit, and then component two can sell for $74 uh, per unit. Um, but additionally, we can blend those two components. That's why it's called the blending model. We can blend those two components into uh, pro either product one or product two. And doing so uh, results in also a new pro a new product on its own with its own, with its own sales price. So that's the basic premise of this model here. Uh, so we'll go through and solve as it makes sense here. So we'll switch to the nonlinear model here. We'll go uh, with our objective function, which also conveniently in these, that you'll see in these open source models that I've included, has a convenient little uh, legend that you can, if you're, if you're just starting out, you can easily figure out uh, what each pieces of the model are and what they should be. But in this case, we got B18, we got our objective function in that cell there, and we do want to maximize our profit again. Um, our decision variables just represents, like I said, the amount that we're actually choosing to sell. Like, what do we actually want to sell in the specified amounts? So that is going to be F12 to F15. Um, we're going to keep with this positivity constraint here again. And we're just going to enter one constraint here for this model and keep it pretty simple. We're going to say, hey, the amounts that are sold really just has to have to be less than or equal to the maximum sale that is calculated here in this column. And so the premise here says, like, hey, if, uh, you know, if I sell all of component one, go 35, then I can't blend and make any more product one. So those are going to change. And so since that's all live and calculated in real time, I'm going to reference those cell references there and go D12 to T, or D12 to D15. And then for these parameters, I'm just going to leave, these are the default settings. I'm just going to leave these for now because those are appropriate for solving this model. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, just like we did with the previous model, we'll just, now that we got everything specified in here, we will click solve and see what it gives us. Hey, just like that, we have got our solution at $14,000. Hey, that's pretty nice. Um, so we'll hit OK. The solution will be applied to the spreadsheet, and we can see that the solution shows that actually the most optimum combination is to blend everything. So that's what the model shows. It blended everything, and nothing was left over. Uh, that wasn't unblended or sold on its own, which 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 makes sense. And even comparing uh, the solution here of these decision variables to the constraints, hey, that also makes sense. It pushed right up against the possible strengths that it could have. So you can have confidence that effectively this model was effectively solved uh, to the optima here. So that is all I'm going to show for today. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the optimization solver add-on. And like I mentioned, if you have any questions or you want to reach out to us, have any feedback, anything like that, we have a lot of options on, we have a couple different forms on the contact us page. So please feel free to communicate with us, reach out to us, let us know, or even comment on this YouTube video here. Thank you all. Bye.